Welcome to Grow Zone 3. So we've already learned in the first two uh, sections of this, which Grow Zone 1, how to grow in jars and what to grow in them or what I found to be the best things to grow in them. And then you've got the Fresh Life Sprouter, which I think is just awesome. And you've then got this, the trays. So to the trays are looking to grow wheatgrass, buckwheat, uh, sunflower and snow pea greens. Now we've got some, uh, starting with the end in mind, we've got some snow pea and some wheatgrass that's already pre-grown. Now I have to say that I actually bought these pre-grown, so I'd have to harvest them myself and I'll get left over with these seed trays and the seed mat as well. I've also got the sunflower and sunflower are quite hard to maintain and keep so we got these two or three days ago and they've already started to droop down. They're still fully usable um, and I'll show you how to harvest those as we work through this um, through this section of the uh, of the program. And as I've always said the the other option is to to buy ready done. So the other way of receiving these is through the uh, through the mail or through the delivery system um, already pre-cut straight to your door all you need to do is rinse wash and use for salad or for juices so how would I go about growing these um, with these you the best thing to do is look for a, uh, a, a, a tray rack and you can buy pre-set up or pre-made or pre-manufactured tray racks. You can get them off the Hippocrates website. You can make them out of um, overflow pipe, 22 mil, or I don't know what that is in um, in the old uh, sort of the old units, um, but 22 mil or three quarter, I think it is. And you can build it up with uh, with solvent glue and stick it together and create your own contraption. And I've seen on Facebook and lots of different groups and communities I belong to and there's lots of all different types of contraptions that have been built on balconies and people are growing this in their balconies in their front living rooms so it's really easy to do that now for growing these you need trays so a quarter of this tray will actually serve one juice um, so if I'm having a quarter of a tray of sunflower and a quarter of a tray of snow pea in my juice I need a half a tray in total. And likewise with the wheatgrass, if I'm having a shot of wheatgrass, it's a quarter of a tray that creates a 60 mil or two ounce shot of wheatgrass. So if that's the case, and I'm gonna do that, um, have two juices and two wheatgrasses a day, I'm going to need for each week a total of 28 quarter trays. So that's, that's quite a lot of trays per person. So if you've got, um, it's, it's literally seven, seven of each tray. So you're going to need 21 of these things if you're going to follow the Hippocrates lifestyle to the book. Now that's a lot of racks and it's a lot of growing time. It's a lot of watering. So as I've said before, it's quite a big consideration to do. Now you could say, well, I'm going to juice it, you know, a juice, a green juice without the living foods or um, sort of blended in or mixed into that, which is fine, it's absolutely fine. You know, if you, if you follow Crispy Cancers, he doesn't include the sunflower and the snow pea shoots in his anti-cancer lifestyle. So you have to do what, you, what, you, what works for you. And for me now, I tend to have about 10 juices a week. Um, so I'm having two most days. Now, for me, with these trays, I've actually got an urban cultivator. Now, because I'm between here and the States, and I'm only here for six weeks, so by the time I get it up and running again, it'll be sooner than I have to get away. And as I've covered in the, uh, the personal spotlight strategy program, you know, time is so important, and how much time we have to spend with our families. And these are, you know, all of this, we have to consider how much time we've got to actually execute these things. So I agree that sunflower and snow peas are some of the most nutritious um, sort of living foods on the planet. And so the way I've found to get it in my body is to use the, pre, uh, the pre-cut, pre-grown. Um, so just a little trick. With the measuring jug, I've measured one seed tray's worth of seeds. So in the urban cultivator, I don't need to pre-soak the seeds. When you're growing trays and you're growing them for the first time, 
what you'll need to do is pre-soak the seeds first. To pre-soak the seeds, you can use a uh, Easy Sprout sprouter, and then you can, um, and you need to soak them for eight hours, and then you need to rinse them for a further 24 hours. So, and that allows the seed to start growing before you put it directly in the tray. Uh, in the urban cultivator, you can literally just put the seeds on um, on the soil, cover them with a bit of soil, wet them down. Um, put the humidity covers on them and then it's off and away. But when you're growing these in the environment or in, in the kitchen or on the shelving unit, you need to make sure that you pre-soak um, and rinse, take it, do a rinsing cycle and you'll see them start to sprout and start to grow beforehand. So once you've done the pre-soak, um, you then furnish the seed tray with a bit so you're with about half, um, half a seed tray full of uh, soil. Now again, I didn't realize you can buy vegan organic soil. So I, I started to buy, when I started this process, vegan organic soil to actually grow the, the, the short leafy greens. Now I know you can grow wheatgrass, sunflower and snow pea in the fresh live sprouter, but with the volume and the amount you need, you need to do it in, um, in, in trays to get that volume going through, because I'm not going to have 15 fresh lives scattered around on my worktop. So yeah, so trays is best. And I also, intuitively, I think growing the veggies or the living greens in soil, um, you're going to get more nutrients pulled out of the soil that you're, we're then going to be able to absorb into our bodies. So once you've soaked and then you've rinsed the seeds, you sprinkle them out and And I bought drip trays. Now, if you're growing them outside on some kind of seed rack, if the temperature permits, now the best and optimal temperature is like room temperature, 21 degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, um, but I just use drip trays. So once you've done that, you would then sprinkle the seed on the top of the soil and wet it down, spray it, water it, and then you cover the seed tray. Now, with the snow pea, uh, sorry, with the sunflower, you would actually grow with it weighted. So the other consideration is to ensure that you're watering it twice a day. Um, so again, you just fill the uh, watering can. Um, using one of these sprays is good for the early stages, um, but once they get growing and get going, um, it, you know, you need to get a watering can and water it on. So once the wheatgrass or sunflower snow peas have risen to about there um, to the level of the seed tray you can take it off and that's now called the greening phase and growing these you need to grow them out of direct sunlight but in a room where there is some sunlight so they can actually start to photosynthesize and get the green and get the chlorophyll building up into that um, into the living foods so now you've got your finished grown trays is then harvesting them what I used to do is I used to harvest the bit I needed and then I used to come back in the afternoon, harvest another bit. Whereas now what I do is because I'm juicing once or even th three times a week on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday and I'm juicing enough for two days. Um, so, and the other thing I learned is that it's better to harvest the whole tray at once and then just store it in the fridge ready for when you need it. So that means that you're going to get, you're not going to let them get floppy and droopy. You're going to harvest them at the right stages. And in the downloadable document that you'll get alongside this, um, this, this sequence of videos, um, you'll have the full sort of information as to what you need to do and what you need to consider when you're growing these, uh, the trays. So harvest them. What I've noticed when I've seen other people harvesting trays is that they tend to um, you know, you can lift up the mat and you might see there that what looks like a bit of mold. Now, some of these seeds won't sprout, they won't shoot. And some of this mold is actually, it's, it's not good, it's best not to eat it. Um, but what you, you're not going to be going anywhere near them. So as long as you're cutting above the, um, the, 
the two, and you're giving it a good wash as well. That's what you've got to do. So, if I start to cut this, make sure that you're cutting right down to the seed mat. Now, there's two methods for cutting. Now, my preferred method is using a knife because you can get right down to the roots. Because if you spent all your time and effort growing these things, you want to make sure you're getting as much of the produce out of the trays as possible. Whereas I've seen some people cutting halfway up the grass and I'm like, no, no, cut as much of the, 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 the grass as you can and then you can juice that. So that's harvesting the wheatgrass. Likewise, with the snow pea, it's easier to cut, it's easier to wash, it's easier to rinse, it's no problem. And again, you just take it, you know, you can be a bit more um, boisterous with it, and you just harvest them, uh, so, and then you can put it in your rinsing um, bowl, ready for juicing or ready for storing for later. The final one is the sunflower. With the sunflower, you've got these, the, the holes that have stayed on. The holes of the snow pea are still in the tray, and the holes of the wheatgrass, which you've either grown with spelt or with um, wheat itself. But with the sunflower, they actually grow up and you know, they, they stick on. You can actually stick them through the juices, so you can just harvest it without worrying about all these, depending on the types of seeds that you've got. So these black seeds, the black, um, some of them have got a white line on and they tend to sort of stick on and then it's a bit more of a pain to actually get rid of all the holes, particularly if you're going to eat it. If you're juicing it's not so much of an issue, you can whack them through the juicer. But with the all black sunflower seed, what you find is that they actually um, they actually fall off, like a high percentage of them, so there's not that many left on here. So if I'm eating it, I'll clean them out. So again, with the sunflower, you tend to, because they're growing up with the holes on, there's quite a bit more soil and stuff left on the actual, um, on the actual product, on the actual sunflower. So again, you just grab handfuls of it, as close to the seed deck as you can, the seed mat, whatever you want to call it, and wash it, rinse it, store it in the fridge ready for your salads and juices. <laughs>